Hello and welcome in section 2, text me and I will tell you how you feel. We'll be doing text sentiment analysis using already trained models and we'll be using both convolutional networks to do that and also long short term memory networks. So in this section we want to judge if a food review is actually positive or negative. This will be our use case. Before we get into technical details, let's have a look at the small application that I've created just to test out those pre-trained models. So this is a very simple restaurant founder. And you have to just specify what you like to eat and then where you want to eat it. And when you click let's go, you will see that there are food reviews for a given place. In the last column we have the percentage, the probability of this um, particular review to be positive. So these can be used as a tool to judge if we should visit a certain place to eat a certain thing, right? And I've been inspired to do that because I've recently went to Rome and I've really good food, so I have a you know really strong motivation to do that. So let's have a look at how we can achieve that. And keep in mind that here we are using this sentiment analysis that we're doing. We're doing it on, only on the client side. We get the reviews from the external API, but we kind of doing all the work in this last column. We do that on in our browser. But before we get into, and then again, the details, I'd like to just remind you that since we are using an external API, we have to disable same origin policy. And to do that, this is the easiest way of going about it in Chrome. Uh, just run Chrome with disable web security switch and also with user data dear new user. So we're basically disabling this security features, which is very common in web browsers, and also we create a new user so we'll get uh, started from scratch. If you are building web applications, you know what the same origin policy is. And this basically means that when you're trying to load the data from an external server, which is on a different address that your particular web page is, you'll get an error from a web browser. So this is only intended for testing. So just keep that in mind. This is actually required for this API that we are using for reviews. In our particular case, Google servers. So this was a quick introduction of a few things that you have to keep in mind. Let's dive into the code. So our code is pretty straightforward. In our index.html file near the end, we have those few JavaScript files that we're using. The first one, tf.js, is simply our TensorFlow library. JavaScript library, and then we have ui.js, loader.js, and index.js. And when it comes to loading all of the resources, pre-trained models, we only need index.js. This is where the essential code results. So let's have a look at index.js. And let's scroll down at the very bottom. And you'll see that we are starting two last lines. We are initializing our analyzer and this is our sentiment analyzer that we are using to do sentiment analysis and here we are using pretty much every step of loading those resources those pre-trained models are asynchronous and if you're not familiar with that it simply means that when you are executing asynchronous function it will return immediately and then you have to provide a callback function, which basically is a function that will be run when those resources will be available. So here we won't get into details about how it works, but just keep in mind that the whole process is based on the asynchronous functions. So we start with initializing our sentiment analyzer uh, using setup analyzer. And let's have a look at this function. This is the straightforward function. Here we're just checking if our URLs for our particular models working are working fine. And we didn't add any error correction here or error messaging here because there's a lot of work involved in that. But we are nevertheless checking for those URLs. 
Then after that, we are initializing those, our initializer with the resources that we've got from specific URLs. So one thing to keep in mind, when you initialize in this analyzer, notice that we provide in the URL for our hosted resources. And those are our models and also our metadata. So here we have model, we have basically two things that we need to download. The model, this is the structure of our convolutional neural network and also our metadata that is used to do the sentiment analysis. And you can switch between models just by changing the CNN underscore URL to LSTM underscore URLs. And once you set up an analyzer, the next step is to basically just initialize in it. And we are initializing it in two steps. First, we load in the model, then we load in the metadata. When we load in model, we simply use a synchronous function from TensorFlow called load model. And this is pretty much it. We're doing a couple of different things here, like doing all the messaging and doing the progress bar. Essence of loading the model is actually to use this asynchronous function. And after that, we want to load the metadata. You'll see how this metadata is actually very useful when we want to do the sentiment analysis. We need to have a couple of informations that is provided in the metadata part. And this part is a little bit more complex. What we basically are doing, we are using fetch, also a synchronous function to get the actual metadata and then turn it into a JSON object, which is basically a JavaScript object. And after that, in load meta, we basically just providing those values that are useful. When we're doing a sentiment analysis, we just copying those values into our class, this class, this sentiment analyzer. So we can use it later on in predict. So those are the basic steps of loading our models.